So it certainly is no secret that I enjoy dungeon crawling board games. I like the idea of taking a fantasy character, having that narrative, going into a dungeon, exploration, beating down some monsters, preferably a boss monster. We've got dragons, we've got undead, we've got goblins in Descent 2nd Edition. And collecting that loot and leveling up. That, that combination of three is what pushes me to really enjoy dungeon exploration games. Whether it's with an overlord co-op or multiplayer co-op or just you against the game. Kind of playing it through there. So everything, looking at a variety of dungeon crawling games. And certainly the genre has exploded over the past couple of years. And we have some very, very strong, some very, very focused and strong titles. The Probably the best example of this would be Gloomhaven, right? Uh, an amazing game, massive refinement. So how do all these games, whether you're going Gloomhaven or we're going real old school, Hero Quest, stack up with Descent 2nd Edition? Because if we look at the the components, the individual components of Descent, the, the game mechanics, everything says, if I look at this objectively, everything says that Descent is at best a mediocre game. It's the type of game, maybe you play it once, or if your buddy has it, good, but why am I going to actively go out and play it, or let alone give it the whole Fantasy Flight treatment of picking up all the expansions and the character packs and just, just going nuts? And you kind of wonder, well, who's playing Descent? out there because it's kind of generic Terranoth fantasy in there the secret sauce of Descent is that it doesn't focus on one thing often what we see in uh, dungeon crawling games one mechanic is highly overplayed highly overrepresented so maybe the game has a an amazing leveling up system almost one that na- that rivals a role playing game you close your eyes for a second and you're like okay i know this is a board game but my character the way it's leveling up with the choices and the stats and the gear is almost role playing like there are a couple of games that do that fantastically but then you see the the other areas kind of suffer so the the quest really is kind of generic the treasure is kind of so-so. The diversity of the monsters and how they act, not so great. Or the rules bloat is so much where some of these Dungeon Quest games, they are very good, the mechanics. They are very slick. But then you're reaching against this invisible wall where you feel like, look, for the effort, I, I could just play a role-playing game. I could run uh, D&D with the Mythic emulator and, and play that and be perfectly fine. So sometimes you hit against this. With Descent, Everything is streamlined. It has just enough to keep you satisfied. It has just enough monster diversity and combat with the dice that you're like, hey, this is pretty good. I don't have tons of options. I'm not going to meta everything, but I have just enough to keep it challenging and keep it swingy. Keep it interesting. Keep it unknown. Keep it what if. Character uh, leveling is there. Okay, I don't have a ton of choices. I can go into one of the subclasses. I can pick a couple of different abilities. But it's enough that it it gives you that taste. Item acquisition. There's not a lot in the deck. You discover it. You use it in the adventure. Unless it's very specified, it doesn't carry it over. But there's enough that populate at random parts of the adventure, and you have to go and pick it up. Dungeon exploration. The dungeons aren't big, but they're laid out enough with the monsters, the way they activate and the way they appear when you enter new areas, that you say, hey, this is, this is pretty good. That is the secret of Descent. That it has taken the three or four things on your checklist when you're looking for a dungeon crawler and you say, I want something good. It's taken all of those and it does it just good enough. And it's the combination of everything that makes it a great game. Now, the second piece. So so you look at that and you say, okay, well, Fritz, well, there's other games out there that possibly do that. And Descent, why are you rating this so high as kind of a a go-to dice chucker dungeon crawler type out there? When you're saying there are other systems, look, I have a a variety of other systems that get out there. They get played, but Descent gets played a lot in the group. The real reason, the final reason, and then there's this kind of a sub-reason we'll add on there, but I'm looking at core right now. I like to focus, when I focus on a game, the core experience has to be Good, bad, indifferent. The core experience is where it's going to happen because one, maybe you don't want to commit to a ton of expansions. And second, getting into expansions fundamentally changes the game. And not everyone has all the expansions. And usually expansions in any system 
while it opens up more opportunities, like in Zia, it will add on more time to the game. And maybe that's good. Maybe you're happy with the game length where it is. So I'm looking core descent. What ranks core descent still so high is the fact that the mechanics move you along. The mechanics push you along, um, but not under an artificial timer. So what I mean by that is you sit down to play. In about an hour, you're getting a fast-paced dungeon exploration game where you're leveling up, you're getting loot, you're exploring, you're battling monsters, and you're facing an overlord. And it, it does it. And the game mechanic pushes you forward. The game mechanic carries you there. Some dungeon crawling games, they just kind of wait. You know, it's like a reactionary type thing where it's like, well, what do you want to do? I don't know. Go through the door? Okay. What do you want to do now? The mechanics don't push you. Descent does. Stuff is happening. Stuff is going on. Stuff is engaging. The Overlord is becoming slightly more powerful with the cards they're drawing every turn. It has a nice timer. As opposed to, and I'm going to give an example of where this goes wrong, Wrath of a Shardalon. I like Wrath of a Shardalon. I, I really do. I've got a couple of plays. I've got some analysis up on my vlog, on my channel here. And I like that it's D&D. I like that it levels up. I like that it has loot. It has many of the same things as Descent. But where a Shardalon gets you is uh, there's this duality of, obviously, if you take your time in a dungeon-crawling game, even if the monsters randomly spawn, you're, you're going to become too powerful. You're going to level up. You're going to get items. You're going to kind of get that synergy going. And eventually, you'll just walk through the game. Okay, where's the fun in that? If the game can slowly push you through the dungeon through a variety of mechanics, it's going to get you there where, okay, you're a little bit more powerful than the monsters, but not so much. And you got to watch your dice. You got to watch your hit points. You got to watch your gear. But a Shardalon pushes you forward. Plus, you get to fight a dragon in a Shardalon. Any system you can fight a dragon for Fritz is, is sold. The bigger the dragon, the better. A Shardalon punishes you with the environmental cards. This is, um, this is where the game gets taken down a couple of pegs, in my mind. And it still is a fantastic game, but it can be annoying where when you open up a new tile to explore, you spawn a monster, you flip over a card. In theory, this is good, because what it represents is what's happening in the dungeon. It's not just a bunch of cardboard and plastic. There's traps, there's alarms in the distance, there's reinforcements, there's natural hazards, because you're under this uh, volcano where a Shardalon lives in the dungeon. But the cards are just brutal. The cards are like um, magma chasm. Everyone takes five hit points of damage. You're like, what? My, my dragonborn sorcerer only has eight hit points. Now i got to burn a healing surge. Oh, uh, spawn two more monsters. They immediately activate. Ambush. What? They, they constantly punish you. So the idea is you quickly learn where it's like, look, I can't hang around and every turn have an environmental card. I got to push into the dungeon to, to find the, the boss monster or uncover the escape tile and get out of here. After a while, it becomes kind of grindy. Descent pushes you forward with the Overlord cards, but the Overlord cards aren't like, I flip a card, you just die. But what? So Descent has just a little bit of everything, pushes you forward, gets you going. The Terranoth fantasy setting is, is just good enough. It's ironic that with all these pieces of exploration, monsters and bosses, character development, treasure being slightly above mediocre, when they come together with that timer, that is where Descent kind of excels. The last piece. The last piece. This is a bonus bonus piece. You have the app. So right now you play one versus many. Overlord versus party. Okay, that's good. With the app, now you have a campaign system. Now you have r random dungeons. And now you have something where the app can control uh, the mechanics, iPhone, Android, and you can play the group against the system itself. That's interesting. That's And the app has some nice music. It's really kind of slick. It works very, very well. It interfaces well. It's not very clunky. It, it feels like it's part of the game. So now Core Descent, with this free app, you now have um, complete co-op strong using the good mechanics and you now have uh, complete overlord if you want to go analog it's a different experience it works just as well they also have the small card expansion where now it randomly generates a dungeon and you play against the the board itself a little bit longer than the base adventure because not only is there some setup time, but it really wants to kind of level you through a campaign in there. But again, it, it pushes you through fast. You've got the monsters. You've got the treasure. You've got the exploration. So essentially, with the core and a $15 to $20 card expansion and the free app, you have three ways 
to play this game. That combination with everything is why Descent is definitely up there in my top five dungeon crawler with the likes of Gloomhaven and some of the other really, really heavy power hitters. <laughs> 